Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'll be responding to a question from one of my viewers. They wanted to know if you could paint Aquacast, and if so, how do you seal it afterwards? And their question actually brought to mind a question of my own. I've been wondering, is it best to also seal the Aquacast before painting and after painting? So today I will be doing an experiment because sometimes the only way to know for sure is to try it out. I also had a bit of a disaster in this video. It was a disaster with my mould. And yeah, so this video might be useful to you because you can see the solution I came up with for my troublesome mould. If all that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Your first job whenever you get a new mould is to find out its capacity. And so I took a piece of plastic about the same size as the mould and put it onto my weighing scales, made sure the weighing scales were at zero once everything was on. And then I poured in water to find out how many grams of water the mould would hold. And after doing that, I knew that my mould held 100 grams of water. I'm going to be using Aquacast today, so I went onto the Aquacast page of the Elichem website where they have a free calculator for you to use. I typed in 105 grams and then it told me how much water and how much powder I would need. I always add a few grams to my initial um, volume just to make sure I'm not scraping the sides of the pot afterwards too much because it does give you an exact amount for your mould. After measuring out my Aquacast powder and my water, I added the powder to the water and gave it a really good mix. Now then, the mould I'm using today is a feather-shaped trinket tray and it's from Timu. You might have seen me um, unboxing this in a recent video. Everything started out okay. I was paying a lot of attention to that handle at the end because I thought, yeah, that's the area where I'm going to have problems. So I gave it a good squeeze to make sure there was no bubbles in there and that the aqua cast had gone in there properly so i was giving it a good poke around in actual fact that is not actually the area that gave me the problem but you will see soon what started to happen everything seemed to be going very smoothly i was adding the aqua cast a little bit at a time giving it a good tap making sure there was no pockets of air in there everything was going fine but then, all of a sudden, the weight of it started to make it kind of cave in and the side started sticking to the inside and it was getting distorted and it just did not look right. I thought, this is not how it's supposed to look. And... Um, yeah, it really wasn't. So anyway, I got it filled. <laughs> it took me a long time because, as I said, the sides kept collapsing inwards and I knew something was wrong, but I kept going because I'd already started. I got it filled and I allowed it secure and then I got it out of the mould and I could see what the problem was. So the first thing I noticed when I had a close look at the mould was that around the opening there was like a, what would you call it, a barrier, a ridge around the opening and on one side it wasn't really there. It's like when the mould had been made it had been trimmed too much and there wasn't that strengthening barrier around the opening. So I think that was one of the problems. It was a bit lopsided. But this is the main problem. The support underneath doesn't reach the sable. As you can see here, when I press down, that support, you have to press it down for it to reach the table. And so, yeah, you would end up with a flat feather. And I wanted it to be like a dish, which I think it's supposed to be like. So 
that was no good and my feather as you can see doesn't look like a dish it just looks like a distorted feather i will still use it as my practice but i wasn't happy so what i decided to do was i mixed up some old plaster of paris that i had in my cupboard it's still lumpy it doesn't matter and i'm just filling the underside of the mold to make a support for it and i thought if i had that there that would make sure it kept its shape when I fill it from the other side later. So let's see how this idea turned out. So once that was cured, as you can see, it's all very solid now. And when I pour my um, aqua cast into the mould now, it won't lose its shape. Well, that was what I was hoping for. We'll see what happened. And so, yeah, that was my little tip on what to do if you have this kind of a problem. So let's see how it turns out. So I just filled it up in exactly the same way as before. I'm going to fast forward it because you don't need to see it all again. But you will notice that everything goes a lot more smoothly and nothing collapses. And as you will have guessed, I am not recommending this feather mould to you. I don't think it's been well designed. However, now you have an answer. If you really, really want the mould, now you know what you can do to make it work. Um, yeah, it wasn't really difficult to do that. And that support that I made to go inside, that can be removed and used again and again and again. So let's take that support out and you'll see what I mean. And there it was, nicely removed and ready for next time I want to use the mould. And then for the taking the feather out, I started at the sturdier looking end. I didn't want to start where that little handle was. I didn't want to snap it off because at this stage, you know, it, the aqua cast is not totally cured. It needs about 24 hours to get its full strength. And I didn't want to put any pressure on that little bit at the end. So I was very careful right at the end to pull the tray out of the mould very gently. And there we have it. This time it actually looks like a dish. It's really hard for you to tell with the camera above. Um, probably, you know, you didn't even see much of a problem with the first one I did. But in if you see it in real life, it's really wonky and quite flat. Here it is. Um, I don't know if you can tell from with the camera up above like that. But it was definitely, yeah, <laughs> it was definitely a bit wonky, wasn't it? And so I was much happier with the second one. But as I mentioned before, I'm still going to paint both of them. I'm going to practice with the wonky one first and save my dish one till last. After giving them 24 hours to cure, it was time to get started on these. And what I wanted to do on my practice one was to seal half of it with Hydroflow Sealer and not seal the other half. So I could find out for myself if it makes any difference um, to seal it before painting it. So that's what I'm doing here, just using a little makeup sponge and some Hydroflow Sealer along one side of the feather and also along one side of that inner piece, which I believe is called a rachis, the centre of a feather. I think that's how you say it, a rachis. So yeah, I used sealer on half of that as well because I'm going to be using some gold leaf and some size and I wanted to see if the size would stick to the sealed side so yeah I did half of that as well Okay, so while I was leaving my sealer to dry, I got my paints ready. And today I'm using pearlescent paints from Jacquard. It's the Jacquard Lumia pearlescent paints. I've got blue halo gold, pearlescent white, pearlescent blue and pearlescent purple. So for this one, the painting style I was going for was to do lots of separate little lines in different colours to try and get that textured effect that you have with a real feather. I found that the paint went on really nicely on the non-sealed side. It seemed to bond instantly with the aquacast 
and yeah I was very happy with how I could apply the paint to that side so yeah let's see how the other side went so at first there didn't seem to be any difference at all and you certainly from the angle you're looking at it you certainly won't see any difference at all so you kind of have to uh, rely on my experience for, <laughs> and my feedback because what happened was sometimes when my brush was a little bit more wet you know if I just rinsed it and got fresh paint and it was a little bit wet I found that the paint did puddle on the surface because obviously once you've sealed it it's non-porous and kind of a little bit waterproof not completely waterproof you need a few coats to make it completely waterproof but definitely it was resisting the water. So yeah, at this stage, I was realizing that actually it's probably best not to seal the Aquacast before painting. Okay then, so it's all painted and now I wanted to find out how it would go with the gold leaf in the middle. So I applied my size for the gold leaf. I've had this size for probably about let me about 20 years and not really used it much it's just been you know stored away I've never really used it uh, so it's very old and I don't even know if you can still get that make of size so I might not be linking to that but anyway <laughs> I painted it on all over the middle of the feather and left it for about 10 minutes to just get tacky and then applied my gold leaf. Now, the only gold leaf I could find in my craft room was gold leaf flakes. So it wasn't ideal. I knew I had some sheets of it somewhere, which would have been easier and smoother looking. Uh, so this did end up a little bit lumpy. I didn't do a very professional job, I've got to say. And after I'd finished, I did have to um, do a second layer because there were a few bits missing. But yeah, it was just a case of applying it with my damp brush bit by bit until it was all covered. I did find that the size didn't bond to the side of the feather where I had um, sealed it. Didn't bond very well to that. So once again, I would say don't seal it before adding size and gold leaf. So I'm glad I did this experiment because now it's clear in my mind that you don't need to seal it first. So after about half an hour, I took a big soft brush and brushed away all the excess. And like I said, I did need to do a little bit of touching up with it. It wasn't perfect, but I think you can see already that it looked really nice with that gold centre. I actually off camera did do a little bit around the edges of the feather as well, just to finish it off. And I thought that looked quite nice too. So yeah, I was happy with my practice feather and it was time to start on my real one. And I almost forgot it's actually not time to start on the other one yet because I haven't sealed it. So once the paint was completely dried, I took my Hydroflow sealer from Elichem Resins once again with the makeup sponge and sealed it all over. Right, so I think I've told you mostly what you need to know already on my practice feather and not much left to tell you. Anyway, what I've done this time is I just put lots of the white on. I loved the pearlescent white in the first one and I thought, yeah, let's keep this one simple. Let's add loads of pearlescent white and while the white is still wet, blend in some blue from the middle and have more of a you know, um, soft, uh, understated, I would say, effect. And so that's what I went for with this one. And in fact, I didn't film all of it. Um, yeah, it, it took quite a long time, actually. I thought keeping it simple would be quicker, but no, <laughs> it actually wasn't. <laughs> Right, well, once I finished faffing around with it and painting, <laughs> never happy, I never know when to stop. But once I did stop, I decided I didn't want to do the um, metal leaf again. I was going to do silver leaf. 
and I thought, oh, it was a bit messy. And I remembered I had my new chrome markers from Let's Resin. So I got my silver chrome marker and tried that out. And that worked really nice on the Aquacast. And I got a bit carried away and forgot I was supposed to be filming it. So here I am just tidying up the back of it. But other than that, it was finished. And then all I needed to do was clean up the base of it. And I'll do that next. So I've got some wet dry sandpaper from my supplies and I only had small pieces so I stuck them both together with some sellotape at the back, sprayed them with water and then rubbed the base of the trinket dish on it and that's 1000 grit paper I believe, it's quite a fine one. And yeah, I found that it was taking a long time and in the end I lost patience with it and I took one of my little buffing blocks which work really well with Aquacast. They're actually for doing your nails but I've always found that they work well with Aquacast so when I lost my patience doing it that way I got my buffing block and finished it off. So once I'd finished sanding, I took a baby wipe, wiped away the residue and it was nice and smooth. And then all I needed to do was seal it just in the same way as before with the Hydroflow sealer. So I won't show that again because you've already seen it and it was finished. So let's have a look at the finished Aquacast feathers sitting together. I'm very happy with the colours on both of them, although I do think I prefer my practice one the most. <laughs> but anyway, the main thing is that I've answered my viewer's question and demonstrated that yes, indeed, you can use acrylic paints on Aquacast. You don't need to seal it first, but you seal it afterwards with Hydroflow Sealer from Elichem Resins. And as a bonus, we also learnt how to deal with troublesome moulds by making extra support underneath. So yeah, I was glad I did that. I really learned something new there and I'm happy that I can use my mould again without throwing it out the window. <laughs> So that's it for today. I hope you found it useful. There'll be another video as usual next week and I will see you then. Thank you for watching and bye for now.